Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. Back to basic. From a request of you guys, I'm going to talk about averages today. Last time I talked about concatenations. I'm going to try to share with you how I'm using the averages and what it is. A little bit theory, mostly practice, direct at the scanner. Stick around and I'll show you. For those who have never been to my channel before, I'm back again. I'm an Amrit radiographer. In my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced Amrit topics, tutorials, just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. And for those who have been here before, thanks for coming back and give me a support on that. All right, before we go to the scanner, I just want to show you some theory. Uh, what this average is of number of excitation. Very short said with this illustration here from amrimaster.com. We know that uh, we have to fill the case space line. So with one acquisition, you fill it at one time, but with two acquisitions, you fill the same line twice. So this means you get more as an R, of course. And at the end of the scan, it's a result of the averages of one and two. And then you get the, the final image, which is, of course, more as an R because you have sampled it twice, right, in this example. But there's one thing you need to keep in mind is that, uh, this is also from amrimaster.com, uh, is that doubling the next only improves the SNR by the square root of two. Okay, remember that because random noise is also sample. So we're going to take that theory to the scanner. We're going to check this out. Okay. So currently we are at uh, 3T, but this doesn't matter. It's the same average. It's the same across all the vendors. So I'm just going to try to get a uh, sequence right here. Let's go to head. Let's go to brain. Let's find a T2 because it's easy to show there. This is 2D T2. Remember that. So let's open this one. And you can see we have average this right there. Up in the corner right here, we have the SNR indicator. That's great to know. It's great to have it because whenever you change one parameter to another, it's great to see if you are losing SNR or gaining more SNR. So it's a great indicator just to have it. Okay, so let's start with one averages. And you can see the scan time is now 2 minutes and 44 seconds. And the SNR is 1. So we go to two averages. Now it's a square root of 2. You don't gain double SNR. It's a square root of 2. And the averages is from one to two, and you see the time will soon increase a lot. See, five minutes and 20. So you double the scan time, right? But you only gain a little bit of SNR. But let's check this out. Let's try to double the SNR. So you have to go up four times before you get now the double of the SNR. You see, from one to two, you have to go up to four averages, and the scan time, you see increases a lot and there's another thing i want to show you because where should i use averages or when should i use face over sampling right so let's check the face over sample so if you do 100 in face over sampling right here you can see you get the same as an r as from one averages to two averages square root of two and the time is also increased the same so when should we use averages or face over sampling from my opinion or my experience, face over sampling is used when I want to avoid fold over. And of course, if I want to have a little bit of SNR without increasing the scan time a lot, because we know we go from one averages to two averages to increase the double scan time, right? So if I sometimes need a little bit of SNR, I use the face over sampling. But if I'm going to use hardware face over sampling and know that I won't get any fold over, no, I won't use that. I would rather use averages because there are more benefits out of averages compared to face of sampling compared to my opinion and i will show you some examples pretty soon okay we know that this is 2d but uh, let's check uh, 3d because a 3d is the same you have also averages there so you can uh, increase that as well so let's go to 3d and let's just take a t2 space but on a 3d it's a little bit different you see the averages here is not one two or three but you have something in between but it's the same here you increase it and the scan time increase and the SNR also increases. But you see, you gain a little bit of SNR, not much, but the scan time increases a lot. So let's go up, go from one. You see the scan time is three minutes and 46. You are now have 0 0.79 SNR. Let's go to four, a lot of scan time. So 3D is a little bit different, keep that in mind. With that said, let's go and I will show you some examples. I will show you what I usually do with the averages. Okay, this vibe, for live imaging is done as a free breathing. How is that possible? It's not meant to free breathe. It's meant to breath hold 
And uh, with every, whenever you're doing free breathing, you should have a lot of motion artifacts, right? Because the patient is breathing. It's not holding uh, their breath. So with this sequence, I did multiple averages. So I did three or four averages here. The scan time, of course, increases from 15 seconds breath hold to one minute or so. But as long as the patient is breathing consistent, lying still, you will get images like this. So try it out if you haven't done so, increasing the averages. Another thing is that I also showed you before flow compensation. This is a T1 toscadelinium uh, of the elbow. The difference is only one averages to two averages. You see the flow artifact reduces a lot. This is on 3T. On 3T, you know the flow artifact is superior compared to 1.5 touch low, right? So this is also working. But also keep in mind that the, the scan time also increases, so you have to find different parameters to, to lower your scan time. And cardiac imaging. Cardiac imaging, you also here go up with the multi averages, free breathing. So this each scene here takes around 20 or 25 seconds or so, depends on the heart rate. But remember that the patient needs to breathe consistent, lying still. If they're moving, breathing inconsistent, this won't work. Sometimes it's working, sometimes it won't. But it's, it's worth a shot if you cannot do any breath hold with them. You get good clear images, only as free breathing, multiple averages, and three or four averages here as well. The last thing I want to mention is that I also made a video about this a long time ago. Uh, you see the flare sequence right here. You get this fade artifact on the top of the brain. Going from one averages, if you go into two averages, you remove, eliminate that kind of artifact. So this is another way to remove the artifact. But also keep in mind that the scan time increases. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. There are many ways to use averages, but I tried to show you today how I'm using it so that I just share my experience. And I just want to ask you a question before we close up. How do you use averages? Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell so we get a ding ding whenever new things from me are coming up. Until next time, I catch up with you. Peace out.